Egunon, my name is Juan Bacuñan Villegas, and I'm going to be talking about the traditional dances and music in Euskal Herria. First of all, a brief introduction. Um, music and dance have been an important part of many cultures throughout the history of each one of them. It is through uh, these two types of art, which are otherwise interconnected, that people often express feelings, experiences, beliefs, and knowledge that are rooted and are transmitted by generations in that cultural group. In this regard, Euskal Herria is not an exception, since they have a huge variety of dances, songs, rhythms, and musical instruments that are undoubtedly an invaluable part of the cultural heritage that Euskal Herria has to share with the rest of the world. In this video, you can see an example of one of those dances that is called Arco Avanza. Uh, some aspects of the Euskal Danzak or Basque dances. Uh, I was not lying when I said that the variety of dances in Euskal Herria is enormous because there are more than 21 different ones. This is a very important part of Basque culture and each historical territory of Euskal Herria has its own. It should be noted that a way of classifying these dances is to divide them in three groups. One of them are the very old dances that uh, have almost not been modified uh, and where the origin is not known. Then you have those recreation of old dances with several modifications. And the third group is, is the totally new choreographies um, that are danced on traditional music. So now I will give some examples of dances from the Basque country and only one example uh, from Iparralde. This is another way you can classify uh, the dances in the Basque country. Uh, you have the individual dances with only one interpreter that can be a male or a female. Then you have the group of dances uh, that can be danced only by men, only by women, or by both together. And this group includes the dances with tools that are usually the swords, arcs, or sticks. Um, then you have the rhythm dances like the Sinta Danzak or the Danza of El Ciego. Then you have the collective dances that is different from the group dances because here the amount of people is, is larger much larger, and this includes the Soka Danza and the La Rain or uh, Laira Danza. Then you have those dances that are danced in the uh, context of a carnival, like the Sauroa Masquerade. Then you have those dances that are uh, allude to jobs or to offices, like uh, Zapatin Danza. And finally, you can also classify them by the geographic song where it is more danced. So this is a particular way of classifying dances, because one dance can belong to several categories at the same time. For example, in the image, you can see the Sinta Danza, that it's a global danza. It's also a rhythm danza. It's a more dance in Gipuzkoa, so it's a Gipuzkoan dance. And in this case, it is only danced by women. Um, from Alaba, I chose the danza uh, the Chulagai, which is a dance that is danced on February the 3rd, on the San Blas Day. It is a very popular dance where all the participants hold their hands and form a circle and in which all inhabitants of the town may take part. It is danced by everybody, women, men, adults, children, and for this reason there is no uh, particular outfit to dance this. Uh, it is a very widespread dance in Euskal Herria and since, since it is fun and very easy to learn, it is one of the first dances thought, uh, taught to the little ones. Sorry. Okay, so from Vizcaya, I chose the Danza de Danza, just this one. Uh, this takes place in Duranguesal, which is a region of Vizcaya, and is one of the most representative dances of the Basque country, due to its rhythm, its strength, and the beauty of its figures. The wind instrument, which it is always dance, is the chistro, and also accompanied by uh, the drums. It's actually a set of nine dances together. Uh, the first four are general choreographies without tools, the next three are danced with tools, these are sticks, boards, and arcs, and the remaining two are the introductory dances and the closing dance. Um, in the video we see one of the dances that is made with the instrument of the sword, and it is called Espata Hokonagutia. From Navarre I uh, chose the dance Laira, which is this one. Uh, it is also called the Lorraine Danza, and it's a cycle uh, because there are six different dances here of group dances, uh, but there are dances uh, by couples. So they organize in couples that are uh, united through this red uh, handkerchief. They are one behind another and then they start the dance. It is a social square dance, that means that it, it happens in the square of the city. It is very widespread in Navarre. Every town in Navarre has its own um, 
way of dancing this and music is always performed with navar gaitas or dulzainas and also with drums and sometimes with chistu. Uh, the six different choreographies are la cadena which is what we are seeing now then the jota vieja then it comes the vals, the fandango, the boleras and the corre calles. Uh, from Guipúzcoa I chose the sorkin danza which is a very known dance in Guipúzcoa and has been danced in many towns in this territory. So the women are represented uh, by men in this case. Traditionally it is only danced by men, so they disguise as women, and they represent the witches or the soldiers. Um, and the dance shows that the men have no fear to the witches, so they imitate all the things that the witches do. It's a ludic dancer, um, very happy I would say, and there's also a Burusagi, or the captain, who also participates in the dance. You can see him, he's in the middle of the two groups that are performing the dance, and he has uh, his own costumes and a flag, uh, a green flag in this case. So, starting dance. From Ibaralde, I chose the Subaru Masquerade, which is not a dance as such, it's also a group of dances that occur in the context of a carnival in the region of Suberoa in France, where all the people involved uh, take certain pre-established roles. In this representation uh, of a war front, uh, the two groups that are confronted are the Korriak, or the Reds, and the Beltiak, or the Blacks. They interact while they dance with the barricade, which in this case, uh, it's represented as a glass. Uh, in the representations that take along having the city as the main scenario, they, uh, the barricades are represented by bottles usually. Uh, I mean the war front is represented by bottles. So um, every year, I found this interesting, the youngest of the Suvaroa towns are in charge of giving life to this masquerade, which in turn is being represented constitutively in the different towns of the province. So they take turns to represent the Subaru masquerade and uh, after a while all the towns have presented their own version of this masquerade in that year. So uh, just a special mention to Fandango and, Ed and Arin Arin, uh, which is uh, in the video we will only see uh, Fandango. And both are one of the most popular and characteristic dances of Euskaleria. What do they have in common? That they uh, are of foreign origin. For example, Fandango comes from Spain, and Adin Adin is developed from the country dances, uh, that it, which is a, a popular style in England. Um, they are classified uh, inside the classification of couple dances as loose dances, which means that the pairs of dancers do not hold themselves when dancing. Why is this important? Because this made them these dances very popular at the beginning of the 20th century, as the rap dances, rap couple dances, were stigmatized in society by religious reasons. So both are danced with a series of complex movements of the feet and also turns, and all of this with the arms raised and extended, while dancers snap their fingers to the rhythm of the music. So now um, a little bit of uh, about Basque instruments. So instruments play a fundamental role in the development of festivities and celebrations and are the main accompaniment of all uh, Basque dances, right? There is a great variety of them, but the greatest development is found in the wind and in the percussion instruments, so that's why I'm only going to talk about them. Um, here you have the chirula and the chistu that are very similar uh, in the sound and in how they're played. Both can be uh, can be played with only one hand. So with uh, with the other hand, you can grab your percussion instrument and make also the percussion and the melody all in just one person, which makes it very difficult, I think. Then you have the dulzaina or gaita navarra that belongs to the family of the oboe because it has uh, two reeds uh, together, um, and the sound is very similar to the oboe too, I would say. Then you have the triquiticha that is similar to an accordion that is a wind instrument because it needs wind to to work and the main difference is that, is that it has buttons instead of the uh, piano keyboard. Finally we have the alboca which I found the most interesting and that's why the video is about this instrument which has a sound very similar to bagpipes um, it actually has two pipes at the same time uh, that make the sound and uh, it's played with only one reed to, that could make it similar to a carnet 
uh, but by having two pipes uh, that make sound, it can make two sounds at the same time. Um, in order to play this, you have to make a technique that is called uh, cycling breathing, where, where the player uh, never stops for breathing the melody. So uh, the melody can always is always continuing, and he secretly breathes, but um, the music never stops. So that's the uh, characteristic of it. Um, now, in the percussion family, we have, for example, the chalaparta, which is a wooden percussion instrument, similar probably to a, a xylophone, uh, played by two people at the same time. Um, I would say this is not a very uh, melodic instrument, but it has a lot of, of uh, rhythmic. It's very rhythmic, and uh, as it is played by two people, I would say that it should be very difficult to play, uh, because you have to coordinate on which is which person is going to play which uh, stick, right? Um, right, the stick. So, um, the banderola is probably very common all throughout Europe, but it's very popular in some uh, Basque traditional compositions, so, uh, so I put it here anyway. And then we have the tamboril that is uh, shown here with a chisto because they are really usually played together, almost always uh, in the video that, that I saw. Uh, both instruments allow to be played with the other one, so they complement very well. And then you have uh, here a video of the tun tun, and uh, with a chirula that, as you can see, is, is uh, the same technique that you could see with tamborila and the cheese too. But I wanted to show, the, show you show you the tun tun. That is this instrument. Um, well, that is a percussion instrument. It has strings, but you have to percute on the strings. So it's like this. So now about bird solarisa, that we recently had a class about this, so you would probably remember about it and uh, you have some notions already of what this is. But it is the art of improvising verses in Basque. The bird solari must follow certain rhythmics and melodic patterns in order to correctly interpret their verbal compositions, taking care of pronunciation and trying to form rhymes, which creates the verso. It should be noted that the song is not accompanied by any other instrument, so the possible rhythms and melodies are taken from all songs of the Basque country. Of course, all the compositions are made in Euskera, um, and there are also several metric variations that can be used to sing the verso. Um, there are various instances where the versolari can present uh, their art, uh, ceremonies, acts of benefit with friends, and of course in competitions, such as the versolari Chapelqueta Nagusia, which is a national versolaris championship, which occurs each four years, and it's teletransmitted in all Euskal Herria. So now just a little bit of the influence of Basque music and classical music, just as a word fact maybe. And throughout history there have been a great number of renowned uh, composers of Basque origin. But I will uh, talk about uh, Maurice Ravel, who is from Cibur, and Pablo Sarasate, who is from Pamplona, but there are more. And the influence can be noticed in the melodies inspired by traditional Basque tunes and in the case of the Capriccio Vasco, Opus 24, uh, by Pablo Sarasate, and in the second movement of the Piano Concerto in G, uh, of which Ravel himself wrote, he wrote this, uh, and let it not be said that this heartbreaking music cannot be Basque music, as if it Basque music were only bouncy and joyous, and if the most Basque songs were not only heartbreaking but desperate songs. So he was probably being, um, I don't know, annoyed, about this composition not being masked because it was probably kind of melancholic but he defended the origin and the origin of his inspiration um, and I found that cool so that's why I put it here uh, there are also other compositions that, that Maurice Ravel have that are um, influenced by Basque music not, not only melodies but also rhythms and rhythmic patterns one example is the Chanson Epique and some passages from Daphne's Air Chloe so, uh, conclusions, it was a very enriching to be able to do this research on the musical traditions of Euskal Herria, as it allowed me to realize the enormous cultural wealth that this town possesses only in this aspect. I highly recommend reviewing some of the attached videos, since they are, uh, well, uh, I didn't put any attached videos, but, uh, I mean, yeah, the, the ones that you saw, but I, don't, I didn't put the links. 
So I, what I ha highly recommend is you to uh, search more, uh, more dances because there are many more and many more uh, parts of the dances that I didn't put here. I only put extracts. And I also recommend to, to look for music, to, for traditional Basque music with voice maybe, because they also have a lot on this. It is a, a thing in which uh, Basque people have uh, developed themselves a lot. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, very cool. <laughs> At least I find it very cool. So, thanks for watching. Bye. Uh, agur.